The information contained in this video is not financial advice, and a failure to correctly utilize the processes outlined and networks used can result in the permanent loss of your crypto. Don't be an idiot. Follow the steps as given. Bro, are you a gamer like me? Do you have a wicked sick computer? Wicked sick. And it's not making you money. Dude, there's a better way. The state of Ethereum mining in early 2022 is a bit dire. The price has tanked by nearly double in the last two months. The difficulty just continues to keep scaling, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. The availability of GPUs is still absolutely complete garbage, with prices hiked and stock not available anywhere. And NVIDIA, of course, introduced their light hash rate last year, which makes it more difficult to get the most out of your cards. Uh, at the end of the day, it's enough to just make you want to throw your computer away and not even look at crypto ever again. So you're probably wondering, if everything sucks this much, why am I doing this video? Because the whole point is, if you already own a GPU, you can be making money safely with it right now. Now the method I'm going to show you is the absolute cheapest way to keep most of your cash when mining. So go to metamask.io in your browser and we're going to start a uh, gateway wallet that allows you to access the Polygon blockchain where you will be mining your Ethereum into. So click on install Metamask for Chrome. Click add to Chrome because yes, it is an extension. Uh, you can install this on Chrome, Firefox, Brave whatever Chromium browser you like, uh, even Edge, actually, and go ahead and turn on Sync, and it's gonna say, Welcome to MetaMask. So go ahead and click on Get Started, and if you already have a blockchain wallet, you can import it if you like. Otherwise, just click on Create a Wallet to set up a new one. Now, it's gonna give you a bunch of warnings. Uh, feel free to go ahead and agree to their concerns. Enter your own password. Um, you will not want to forget this obviously, but it is technically not the most important thing, but you should keep it on hand, agree to their terms of use, and click create. After a moment, it'll load a video that, uh, you know, goes over a lot what I'm talking about here, and if you click here, it'll reveal your mnemonic phrase. These are 12 words that any blockchain wallet or any crypto wallet you create will require you to keep. You will want to write these down. Keep it in a notebook, keep it on a card close to your computer, but don't copy them into Google Drive, just write them down, because you're going to need them eventually, at some point. Go ahead and click next, and it'll ask you to enter that phrase again to confirm that you wrote it down. This is just a security verification to ensure that you actually did write it down. And it's going to remind you again, please make sure you back it up. Don't share it with anybody. I have a safety video, you should probably watch it. Now we need to add the Polygon network to our MetaMask wallet. You'll see it defaults to the Ethereum mainnet, where a lot of big things happen, but it's also very expensive. So go ahead and click Add Network, and we're just going to type in Polygon or Polygon mainnet. Uh, both are perfectly fine. The URL is https colon slash slash polygon-rpc.com. The link will be below in the video description. It is chain ID 137. The currency symbol is Matic. And the block explorer is https colon slash slash polygonscan.com. Go ahead and save that. Now you might want to go back and pause it so you can enter that all correctly. And now you can see we have both the Ethereum mainnet and the Polygon mainnet as our available networks. So you'll notice here that you have Matic listed in the wallet, but there is no Ethereum. So how do we get that in there? Well, we can use this import token feature to be able to get it in there. Um, I feel the easiest way is to go to polygonscan.com, which is the Polygon Explorer. And you can just type WETH or W-E-T-H, which is the wrapped Ethereum that uh, is Ethereum on Polygon. Click on that, and then on the right there, you can see it has a contract address, and just click the copy button there. Click on import token, and then paste that into the contract address field. 
Uh, once you import that token, uh, it'll ask you to confirm to add it. And if you go back into your wallet, you can see that now we have wrapped Ethereum visible. There's another way to do this as well. You can go to wallet.polygon.technology, which is the official Polygon wallet. And you can import tokens from there. You just click on connect wallet. If you're there going there for the first time at the top right, select MetaMask. So you'll see here that uh, it'll ask for a connection. You just click on next and authorize the connection. And then you'll have to authorize it by signing it. So once you do that, you have access to the Polygon wallet. Uh, the Polygon wallet itself is relatively useful. You'll see that it has a list of tokens in your wallet, similar to MetaMask. Um, it's just pulling the data from the blockchain. You can hover over any of these or search for them and then click on the MetaMask icon at the right to add it to your wallet in MetaMask. Uh, just click add token. If I go back into MetaMask, you can see that that token USDC is now there. Of course, there's a lot of other useful functions here as well. Um, highly recommend using the swap for gas token if you ever find yourself without Matic as Matic is the gas token when you're using Polygon. And I have a whole video on this, um, so I'm not going to go quite into it, but suffice to say, if you only have Ethereum and you need Matic, use this tool. They also have the bridge, which uh, you can use to move funds, but don't use the bridge. I highly, highly recommend you don't. But the one thing you don't want to do is use the bridge. Oh, the humanity! So now we got to download a mining program, and this isn't always as straightforward as you think. So there are three different mining programs uh, that I'm going to cover here. So we got T-Rex. This is focused on NVIDIA GPUs. There's Team Red Miner, which is focused on AMD GPUs. And again, I'll have the links all below for all of these. And then we have G-Miner, which can actually handle both. So depending on your use case, you can use either of these. To download the software off of GitHub, uh, you just go to the right where it says releases and you click on the latest release version. For T-Rex, this is 024.8. And of course, for Team Red Miner, as of writing, this is 091 and 275 for G Miner. All of their releases are found on the right. If you just click into it, it'll bring you to that version's release page and it'll always update to the latest version. And of course, if you're downloading on Windows, which this guide is based around, you just click on the Windows zip and open that sucker up using your favorite uncompression program. Now you can't see it, but Chrome actually blocked this download. A lot of mining programs are marked as viruses automatically by Windows or by your browser. So what you gotta do is right click it, click copy link address, and then open Microsoft Edge. I know, we never use Edge for anything, except it works great for this. Just go ahead and paste that link into the top in Edge, and it will download it. For whatever reason, Edge itself doesn't seem to give a crap about what it thinks might be viruses. So you can open it up with WinRAR or 7-Zip or whatever you're using, and you're going to want to extract that to a local directory. It's a good idea to unpack the file into a directory you'll remember. Um, so something like your SQL and backslash mining programs or miners or whatever. And then I usually put the, uh, you know, the actual program T-Rex and whichever version it is. Go ahead and click OK to unzip it. If you want to try out multiple programs, uh, you can head back over to GitHub again using the links found in the video description below and you can download a different one because I only have an NVIDIA card in this PC. I'm going to download Gminer as well because TRM or Team Red Miner isn't going to work for me. So once again, uh, in some cases, Gminer apparently doesn't come up as a virus, so that's helpful. I didn't even have to do anything about it. And again, I can extract it and install it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to ethermine.org because that is my favorite pool. I've featured it many times and we're going to click start mining. This will give us a list of servers we can connect to. They're all by geographic region. But what we want to do is click connect wallet at the top right first. We're going to select MetaMask because that's what we already set up. And it's going to populate a little confirmation window. We're going to click next and then click connect because we're going to authorize 
either mine to connect through MetaMask. And you'll see that my wallet address is up there and that matches what we have here. So now that I'm connected to EtherMine, I have to connect my mining program to it. So I'm gonna pick US West uh, because I am closest to that server. You can pick the one that you're closest to and we're just gonna use the standard stratum port of 4444. So what I need to do is open up my mining batch. So the folder that I extracted T-Rex or G-Miner or whatever into, and I'm gonna right click on the one that says ETH ethermine.bat. I'm gonna change my server to US2. You can leave it as EU1 if you're in the EU. And then where it has a different default wallet address, I'm gonna go copy again, copy from the clipboard, click that account one at the top in your MetaMask. And we're gonna replace that default wallet address with the one that I just copied. We can change the name of the worker, um, right? It defaults to rig zero. I'm just gonna name it 3080 TI Gamer. And we have to save the file. And then I can just go back into the folder and double click it to run it. So the miner launches in a standard Windows command window. And yes, it kind of runs as slow. I'm actually going to speed it up for the purposes of this video, but uh, trust me when I say it is actually mining. Now this is an LHR card, so it's going to have an unlock or automatically come up. And you can see it gives you statistics on your speed, um, whether it's on an LHR mode or not, and your temperatures, which are the ones you really want to pay attention to. You can see on the left, it has my core temperature, and then on the right, it has my VRAM temperature. And that is really, really high. I'm also using a lot of power, my fan's pretty low, and it's not very efficient. Now, all of these things can be remedied pretty easily. For the average user, this is easily accomplished using a product like Afterburner. Um, you can just download it from MSI's website. Uh, I already have it installed, so I'll just pop it up over here and put my miner up here right beside it. So you can actually tweak it while the miner's running with most cards. Um, so one thing I want to do is I want to bump down that power limit. You know, generally you're going to be putting it between 65 to 85, depending on the card. You'll want to play around with it a bit. I'm going to pump the fan all the way up. You got to click that A to turn off auto fan. You want to put your core clock down from minus 250 to minus 500, and I'll put it to a 500 memory clock or so. You can go higher and you can go lower on all these things. There are lots of guides and lots of standards, but I'm going to give you this as just kind of a base starting point. Once you click that check mark, it's going to run for a little while. I'll leave this for about half an hour. And now you can see my speed has improved significantly because I haven't been using my computer and my temperatures are way, way down. Instead of being 72 on the core, I'm now at 54. And instead of being 92 on the VRAM, I'm at about 78, which is stellar for this card. Now, keep in mind, this card has been repadded and has extra heat sinks and a fan, which I'll go over in a little bit. So how do we keep tabs on our miner? Well, if you go back to the site and copy that, you can go to the ethermine.org website and slap your address in the search bar at the top right, and it'll bring up a dashboard. You can see it has my average, which is a six hour average. It's only been running for 40 minutes. Uh, it'll show my current, which again, because this is a PPLNS pool, it will take some time to get up. And my estimated earnings are based off a 24 hour average. So it's gonna take 24 hours for those to, you know, appear as a standardized number. Note that Polygon payouts do have the lowest threshold, but you still need to get 0 0.005 Ethereum to receive your payout up to once every 24 hours. So how do you keep a card from burning out? Well. Add more fans to your case if it's in a case. Open up the side panel. Work on your room cooling. Put more fans out there. Or if you have an air conditioner, um, use that more frequently. Uh, opening a window introduces a lot of dust in the room, but you know, it technically is an option. If you're feeling sassy, you can put heat sinks. They're like 12 bucks on Amazon for like 100 on the back of your backplate. Uh, to cool the VRAM and you can shove a 120 millimeter fan on top of that if you have one laying around like I do. If you do have a card with GDDR6X RAM on it, you might want to crack it open, clean it off and shove some new thermal pads on there because it'll take this, you know, to this and that is a lot nicer. Um, you're going to get a lot more longevity out of your card. And I plan to release a video on actually how to do this. There's lots out there, but you know, I want to do one my way. 
Also, it should be kind of a no-brainer, but clean it out. Clean your fans, clean your car, use compressed air, rub it off, whatever. If you're new to all this, I definitely recommend you checking out my older videos as well about taking funds out of Polygon. Um, I have a pretty significantly large series on various use cases and various ways to do so. So go check out those uh, parts of my channel because they will be very informative if you're new. And definitely check out my video on how to stay safe on side chains and keep scammers from stealing your crypto. Bro, there's a better way.